Okay, hello, here we are again. Um, I am standing in this video in front of a particle system. Circles are falling from the sky. It is quite beautiful, it is lovely. This is uh, an example you'll find in the uh, processing examples under topics, simulate simple particle system. Why are we looking at this? We know how to draw a circle on the screen. We call the function ellipse. We know how to draw perhaps a bunch of circles on the screen. We could say ellipse, 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 and we'd have five circles on the screen. What if we wanted to have several hundred circles on the screen? In that case, we don't want to have to write the code ellipse a hundred times. There's an obvious solution to this. It is saying, hey, you know how to draw a circle? Draw that circle. This, this line of code draws a circle. We'll repeat that line of code a hundred times. So this is what we want to learn how to do today. We want to understand how do we take a line of code or multiple lines of code, repeat them multiple times so that one concept, the singular concept of a particle falling, can be done hundreds or thousands of times over. We're not going to get to this particle system example yet. We'll start to see that when we get to object-oriented programming examples, but we'll start with something simpler. So I'll leave this running there because it's a nice little effect <laughs> while we go over here. Well, hello. OK, so we know how to write a conditional statement. A conditional statement is the clue to how we will write a looping statement. So this is how we write a conditional statement. If some condition such as x is less than with, execute some code. This is a conditional statement. If this evaluates to true, execute this code. If it evaluates to false, don't execute that code. Keep going. So we actually have this already set up in an example that I made before I started this video and I realized I never ran it. So hopefully this is going to work. We'll find out. It's good to find out. Uh, so let's run this example. And we can see here what's happening. A circle is moving across the screen because the value of x is currently less than width, so it's incrementing it. When that's no longer true, we stop incrementing it, and uh, it stops. the x equals x plus 1 stops happening. So that's a conditional statement. What is a loop? A loop. Uh, I want to say looping statement, but I don't think anybody says that. What is a loop? Well, there are two kinds of loops. There's a while loop and a for loop. We're going to look first. I'm getting better at this back and forth thing. At a while loop. OK. Notice this conditional statement. If x is less than width, execute this code. A while loop looks like this. While x is less, less than width, execute this code. Exactly the same format with a major, major, major difference. This is in my way. <laughs> major difference. The word if is here. The word, the, word, the word while is there. What does this if ensure? This can happen, this, um, this code that's here can happen zero or one times. It can happen zero times if that's false. It happens once if it's true. How many times can this line, can this code occur? It could happen zero times. It could happen one time. It could happen two times. All the way to, in theory, an infinite number of times. It's kind of an, maybe you will write a loop someday that will happen an infinite number of times, and then you will also conquer the universe or something. But um, so this is a very key difference. While this is true, continue executing this code. While this is true, continue executing this code. If this is true, execute this code just once. So let us walk over and now change our if statement to a while statement, and let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm walking over, I'm turning this way, and here we are. I think I'm still in the shot. OK, so I'm going to change this to a while. And something goofy happened with the screen turning gray. If I shake it around a little bit, and oh, everything's gone wrong. I'm recording it. Oh, this was good. This video was going. This is like, I feel like my best video yet. Now it sort of fell apart. OK, we're fine. OK, here we are. Let's look at the screen. Now, here we go. While x is less than width, x equals s, x plus 1. x equals 0. Let's run this. What's going to happen? Hmm. I didn't even see it move. Wait, wait, wait. Are we sure about that? Let's run that again. Run. Oh, it's already there. Why? Because it got to this moment, and it just did this code over and over again. So the first time it drew the ellipse, it was already at the edge of the screen, because it incremented it over and over and over again until it got to be with, and then went down to the bottom. So this is interesting. While x equals x plus 1, uh, uh, so, so what, what's going on here? Well, first, 
What would, what's really happening here? Let's take this code and put it inside the while loop. Oh, I don't see anything. Hmm. What's going on there? Interesting question. <sighs> so hard to describe, and I want to go back and draw something, but I want to keep this video short. This is, <laughs> this is why you practice or you plan in advance. There's a very big problem going on here. The first time we go through, I and mean, shouldn't we see x was 0, then x is 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and every one of those times we're drawing a circle? I should see circles the whole way across. That's what you might expect. Well, that's what happened the first time through draw. The second time through draw, what was the value of x? Width. So we need to make sure with this particular while loop that we reset x back to 0 every time through draw. Now look what happened. This is interesting. Looks kind of like a streak of line across the screen. Let's change this to x equals x plus 20. Now we see the purpose of a while loop. The purpose of a while loop is to say, repeat this code a bunch of times. How many times? Well, if the width is 400 and we're going up by 20, 400 divided by 20 is like 20. So maybe there's 20 circles. Maybe there's 19 if we're off by one. Who knows? The point is we have now successfully repeated a single uh, one circle many times with one line of code. I like standing this way because I can point at the code. So <clears throat> how are we doing this? x equals 0. While x is still less than width, keep drawing circles all the way up until x is no longer less than width, and then leave, that, leave, leave the while loop and go back and circle through draw again. This would be a nice time for me to ask if you had any questions, but you're not really there. Uh, but you might have a question. I guess at this point, just email me if you have a question. Whatever. Um, there are some other important things I wanted to say about this. this. Let's just look at this for a second. What would happen if, ah, this is really good. This is good. What would happen if I put mouse x in here? This is an interesting question. I'm going to run this code. Uh-oh, nothing. I'm getting nothing. OK, here's the essential problem. I forgot to put on a timer, so I have no idea how long this video has been so far, but I'm sure it's way longer than I ever imagined or wanted it to be. That's OK. You could stop now. You could actually just stop now and go on to the next video. But I'm going to say a couple of good things, hopefully. So um, OK, so let's look at this while loop. While x is less than width. Draw a circle at an x location. What if I put here x is equal to 0, and then I said x equals x minus 1? What is the major problem with this loop? There is no syntactical problem. We've got semicolons, we've got parentheses, we've got curly brackets in the right place. Everything is good. But we have a fundamental problem with this code x equals 0, then x is negative 1. That's less than width. And x is negative 2. That's less than width. This would get us stuck in an infinite loop, an infinite loop which happens forever and ever and can never break out. We're never going to get to end of draw. We're never going to see anything. Loops must always have an exit condition. And it is up to you to make sure that that exit condition is met logically through the what, however you organize the logical thinking of your code. It's no, processing's not going to say like, hey, I'm looking at your code and you know, your exit condition might never be met if these possibilities happen and this happens and this happens. You probably want to like look at that again and make sure you write better code. No, it can only view the syntax. It's fine saying like, I'll just keep looping. Uh, that's what you told me to do. I'm just going to do it. No problem. Uh, you won't like the result because this is what you're going to get. So why do we have an infinite loop here? Why? We're saying x equals x plus, sorry, mouse x. Well, what value of mouse x would give us an infinite loop? You might be thinking 0. It's just like, have you ever watched Dora the Explorer? I say, you, you shout 0, like you should talk to the TV. Probably not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I wish I could hear you shouting 0. But uh, when the value is 0, x is not going to increment. It's never going to be greater than width. This is never going to be false. There's no exit condition. So I should just be able to move the mouse. Now the value of mouse x is like 200, right? It's like it's around 200. Shouldn't I have my, um, my, I should be exiting my loop now. The problem is mouse x only ever updates once through draw. So if it was 0, it's 0. We're stuck in an infinite loop. 
So let's just get ourselves out of that problem. We have to write better logic, more sound logic, so we don't have that problem. What is a way you might get out of that problem? Well, what if I uh, say, if mouse x is less than 1, say x equals x plus 1, otherwise, then it's OK. So in other words, I am only allowing there's other ways to solve this problem, but this is a nice simple way of using a conditional statement. Whoa, inside of loop, we have, this is why blocks of code are so important. We have the loop block of code, and now we have another block of code inside. This is something you have to get used to doing. We want to say, as long as x is less than width, you know, and if mouse x is less than 1, we better go up by 1 so we meet the exit condition. Otherwise, don't worry, we can go up by mouse x because it's some positive number. Eventually, we'll get out of the loop. And here we go. We're going to run this now, and we can see what is exciting about this is the, the displacement between the circles is relative to mouse x, right? Here, mouse x is probably around 50 or something. Actually, that's probably a terrible estimation of the pixels. But you can see what's happening here. And when mouse x is 0, it just increments by 1. So, um, so this is a while loop.